In this Java tutorial, we're looking at method overloading. First, we'll do a really simple example that shows what method overloading is. And then we'll do an example of overloaded constructors, which is a really common way to use method overloading. If you've never written your own constructors before, then don't worry, it's really simple and I'll walk you through it. First, let's start with a really simple example that shows what method overloading is. I've just got an empty class here and say we want four players in our game. Let's make player one, player two, player three, and player four. I'll make player one Luke, and then I'll just copy and paste that. So we'll make Luke, Yoda, Anakin, and Obi-Wan. I think there's a dash in there. I can never remember. That's player one, player two, player three, and player four. I know this is kind of ugly. We're making our players as strings instead of as custom objects. We'll fix that after, and that's where we'll use our overloaded constructors. For now, let's say we want our players to be able to fight. So we want to be able to go fight player one, player two. And we also want to be able to go fight player one one, player two, player three. So we want to be able to call fight and pass it either two players or three players. And we don't want who's ever coding inside of this game to have to remember that there's like a version of fight for two players and then like a version of fight for three players. We just want them to have to remember that to make players fight, you just have to call the method fight because that's a lot easier. So this is method overloading. When you have multiple methods that have the same method name, but that take different parameters. So let's write out our overloaded versions of fight right now. Under our main method, let's just go public static void fights and we'll have our first one take two parameters and they're just strings for now so we'll go string player one and string player two obviously if you had an actual game you would have more code in here i'm just going to put two players are fighting and then we're just going to copy and paste this method because our next one is going to look really similar it's just going to take three players instead of taking two players and then maybe we also want to have a version of fight that also takes like the location where the fight is happening as a parameter or something like that. So we could have fight player one, player two, and place fights happens, which will also just be a string. And I'll just make place fight happens. Let's make it at the Jedi temple. And we're going to run into a problem here because we want to make two versions of fight that both take three strings as parameters. So at runtime, Java wouldn't know which version to call here. It's going to underline it and give us an error as soon as we copy and paste this version of our method. So if we try going string place fight happens, then it gives us an error because it's saying, hey, you have two versions of this method that both take three string parameters. So at runtime, it's not going to be clear which one of these to call. But that's okay for now because I want to change our players into actual players instead of just making them strings inside of our program. If you've never written custom classes before, don't worry about it. It's super easy. I'm going to walk you through it. We're just going to go to the same folder that this first class is in. Mine's in the package called method overloading and then I'm just going to go to the default package because that's where I put this first class. So I'll right click on the default package and hit new class and I'm just going to name this class player with a capital P because class names start with a capital and no main method for this class because we already have a main method inside of the first class that we wrote. So I'm just going to hit finish and now we have our player class. A good way to think of this player class is kind of just like a blueprint for making players inside of our program. So inside of this main class that we wrote where all the actions happening inside of our program, we're just going to make players in here. And this player class is just a blueprint for making those players. So let's say we want each of our players to have a username, which will be a string, to have HP, which will be an int, and to have attack power, which will also be an int. So now when we make a player inside of our program, then Java is automatically just going to make that player have a username, HP, and attack power. So let's change string to player. And I could just do it for these top four lines. I'm actually just going to highlight everything in here, though, and change everywhere where it says string to player so that the parameters for our method also get changed to players. So I'm just going to highlight everything, hit Control F and find string, replace with player for selected lines. And there's going to be one or two spots where we didn't actually want it to change because place fight happens. I'm still just going to make it a string so that we don't have to write a whole nother class for that. So I'm just going to be lazy and make it a string. And right now we're getting an error on the right hand side of our assignment operator for each one of our players because on the left side we've made a player variable and on the right side we've just passed it a string so java's saying hey i know a player is supposed to have like a username and it's supposed to be its own kind of object so you can't just pass a string to it so what we're going to do is we're going to say new player and we haven't indicated which values we want for the username or the hp or the attack power we haven't told java how to actually make a player so it's just going to kind of make 
make a generic player. Let's print out that generic player just to see what it looks like. We're gonna to have to comment out these errors here. Just gonna hit Control Shift C, and that's making everything else have errors. So I'll also Control Shift C that. So everything's commented out that needs to be commented out now. So let's print out the values for our player. Player one dot username and player one dot HP and player one's attack power. So Java's just going to give us some default values for these because we didn't indicate what we want them to be. Right now, Java's just using what's called the default constructor. So if you don't provide a constructor for an object that you make like this inside of your class for the object, then Java just uses the default constructor and just gives some default values to your object. So for ours, we're going to get a string that is null and then a attack power and HP are both to zero, which might be okay. Maybe that's what you want to happen in your program, but there's a decent chance that you want people to be able to make players inside of your game and to have those players' usernames not just be null by default when they're made. So we're gonna make a constructor for our player. As soon as we write any kind of constructor for our player, then Java's gonna stop using the default constructor and it's gonna try using one of our constructors that we've made. This first constructor that we're gonna make is called the no arg constructor because there's not gonna be any arguments that go into it. It's just just going to get default values for the username and the HP and the attack power. So for the username, let's just go Steve and HP 100 and attack power, let's just go 10. So now where we made player one and we call new player, instead of using the default constructor, it's going to use our custom constructor, which we've put inside of our class. And to indicate that it's the constructor, we've just used the name of the class with followed by a set of parentheses. So now when Java runs our program, then it doesn't use the default constructor. It uses our own custom constructor. We get the username Steve, 100 attack power, no, sorry, 100 HP and 10 attack power. Now let's say we also want anyone coding inside of this game to be able to make a player and to choose that player's username their HP and attack power. This is where overloaded constructors come in. So right now we're using our no arg constructor here now since we've written one so it's not using the default constructor anymore. And for player two let's use a one arg constructor. So we're going to pass the constructor one argument and that argument is just going to be the player's username. So we'll go player player two equals new player and we'll just pass it the string skaterboy3000. Right now we're just getting an error where we've put new player because Java is saying, hey, there's no version of the player constructor that takes a string. So we're going to write one. So I'm just going to copy and paste our first constructor that we made. And we're going to write our one arg constructor, which just takes string username. And obviously we don't want the username to be set to Steve now because we're providing a username that we want it to be. So we're going to write this dot username equals username. And if you've never seen the, this keyword before, all it means is set the username for or this object to the username that is getting passed into it. So this dot username just means that we want the username for this object. Because right now we have kind of a cool situation happening where we have two variables that are both named username. We have this username that's got passed into the method, which is the local variable username that came from the main class that we wrote where we're passing in skaterboy3000. And we also have our instance variable username that we put at the top of our class that just represents the username for this player. Now let's print out the details for player two. I'm just going to cut this and paste it and we'll do it for player two instead of player one. Player two username, player two HP, and player two attack power. So let's run this and print out player two's info. We get skaterboy3000 and then 100 HP and 10 attack power. Next let's make a three arc constructor. So this constructor is going to take the username, it's going to take the HP, and it's going to take the attack power. So for player, player three, we'll get rid of this string Anakin. And just like we did above, we'll just go player. And this time in the parentheses, we're going to give the username. Let's go Jedi boy 2000. And for the HP, let's go 90. And let's give it attack power of 11. And so now we're getting that same error we got before where Java's trying to call a three arg constructor, but we haven't written one yet. So let's go write it. Let's just copy and paste our one arg constructor, which I should have changed the label on when we copied and pasted it. This is our one arg constructor. So we'll copy and paste our one arg constructor. And this time we're going to say, don't just expect a username, expect int HP and int attack power. So this is our three arg constructor. And we're going to say set the HP 
for this object, set the HP for player three to the value HP that's getting passed into this constructor, which is just HP without the keyword this. And then we'll do the same thing for attack power. This dot attack power equals attack power. So now we can run our three arc constructor and we're just gonna cut and paste that again so that we can print out the values for player three. Player three, username, HP, and attack power. So now if we run this, then we get player three, who is Jedi Boy 2000 with 90 HP and 11 attack power. So all three of our overloaded constructors are working. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. I'll put some links in the description to some awesome resources for anyone learning Java. Thanks for watching.